Imagine spending $400 million on a video game. That's not just a budget, that's a GTA heist payout. And what do you get for that kind of cash? Concord, a game so expensive you could buy around 40 brand new Ferraris, and still have enough left over for a luxury vacation around the world. That's right folks, $400 million. With that kind of money you could easily buy every loot box in every EA game and still have enough left over to build your own real life spaceship. Concord costs about $400 million to me. Oh my god. This must be Sony's biggest loss ever on a game, and it is. It's the biggest game Sony's ever released from a budgetary standpoint from the first party or second party. The game was so bad that it was cancelled in just two weeks. Now during these two weeks before it was cancelled, I was seeing a lot of people comparing this game with No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk 2077. They were saying that just like those games, Concord will make a comeback. Now let's look a bit at these games. When No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk were released, many of the promised features were either missing or significantly scaled down. The games were riddled with technical issues, from game-breaking bugs to frequent crashes. Many players struggled with performance issues, especially on PC, where the games often ran poorly even on high-end hardware. Despite all of these problems, the developers didn't give up. They kept working on the game, and they consistently released fixes and added new content to the game. The player base, even though it was giving these games bad reviews, they still were playing them. This is because the core premise of these games was actually interesting and appealing. Sure, the gameplay was buried under a mountain of bugs and missing features, but at their core, these games were something different, something unique. There was nothing else quite like them, and for all their flaws, they had a huge potential. This in comparison to Concord, which was just another live service game in an already overcrowded pile. No unique premise, no groundbreaking features, just a lot of corporate buzzwords and a whole lot of nothing. While No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk had players sticking around because they saw the potential underneath the mess, Concord was like showing up to a party with a bowl of plain lettuce. It was polished enough, sure, but that's like saying your lettuce is really well washed. They were more focused on checking boxes than drawing in players. So instead of a redemption arc, Concord got a speedrun to cancellation. Two weeks. That's how long it took for it to go from the next big thing to the next big dumpster fire. The term apparently verbatim had been used that Concord is the future of PlayStation. That they had such major ambition for this game that it was referred to internally as a Star Wars like project for Sony, that it can be repeatedly revisited over and over and over again. It just goes to show if you're going to spend $400 million on a game, you might want to make sure people actually want to play it first. They created a game so generic, it made every other live service game look like a masterpiece. Instead of focusing on original gameplay or compelling characters, they went all in on ticking every diversity box and pushing the woke culture. There was, and I think we can kind of get this vibe from just the nature of the people making it and kind of the way the game reads and all that, a toxic positivity vibe. You weren't allowed to say anything apparently internally about this game, about how like something's wrong with it, character designs are not right, um, and so on and so forth. We don't need this in games. The characters also look like there were our high school teachers and janitors from school. Games are supposed to be an escape, a way to dive into epic adventures, become heroes, or explore fantastical worlds. Not a trip down memory lane to your high school cafeteria. When I'm playing a game, I don't want to see characters that look like my old math teacher or the janitor who always gave me a suspicious look for using too much toilet paper. I want warriors, wizards, and futuristic rebels, not the faculty lounge. We literally even have the school's cafeteria trash can as a character. This obsession with making everything realistic always fails when it comes to games. I mean, if I wanted to deal with everyday issues and mundane characters, I'd just, you know, go outside. Games should be a place to forget all that. They are an escape from reality. It's fine to have diverse stories and characters, but let's not forget why we're here. To escape, to be entertained, and to live out our wildest fantasies. Not to be reminded of the janitor in my high school. This is exactly what happens when you make a game that doesn't appeal to anyone. And then, of course, there's the whole live service model. You know, the one where they want you to keep paying for stuff forever. Yeah, players are getting wise to that nonsense. People don't want to feel like they're being nickel and dimed to death. They want a complete, satisfying experience. Not a game that's only half-baked, with the promise of more to come if you just keep paying. Concord 2024 tried to ride that wave, but the players saw right through it. There's this term in, in product development 
uh, not only with games, but really with everything. You can like manufacture a tchotchke. You guys might have heard of it. It's called minimum minimum viability or a minimal minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. The idea behind this or MVP, the, the idea behind this is that this is like what you're trying to achieve. And it's like once you cross this barrier, you feel comfortable selling it. It's not that it's the best it can be or that it's what it's going to be by the time you launch it, because there's all sorts of extra stuff you do to it. But like, this is the minimum viability of the product. Um, when the game had already had $200 million spent on it and was basically in an alpha form of qu quarter one of 2023, from that point until the game launched, Sony spent another $200 million on it. The scuttlebutt behind the scenes about Concord is that the game was in a laughable shape <clears throat> um, when it was shown and Ready, basically like when the alpha was ready to go and they were kind of being like you know we're ready to kind of get moving towards getting this thing out in the next year or two it was in such horrible shape that sony felt like they needed to spend that much money again so you know 200 plus 200 to get the the game to to the mvp status not to the status of it being like a great game to get it to just viability and that at that time in quarter one 2023 there was such there was nothing done <laughs> like a major expense was having to urgently outsource much of the game to other studios to finish building the game out and that two fundamental things were not worked on at all up to the point in which the game was shown in alpha onboarding nothing about that no like there was nothing about how players get on like how they make their character all that kind of stuff or you know choose their character and get there and monetization two very expensive very specific and boutique things that happen to games like this um and so that's the first thing that i wanted to say is that it's not only about the ongoing cost which would be in the millions to keep the game going per month but that the game cost about 400 million dollars to make soup to nuts the game was a hollow shell, and no amount of rainbow-colored loot boxes was going to fix that. So what's the lesson here? It's pretty simple. Make games that are fun and engaging. Companies that focus on creating something enjoyable, something that people want to play and explore, will always have a better chance of success. Sure, you might have some missteps along the way. Just ask Hello Games. But if your heart is in the right place and you're genuinely trying to create a great experience, players will appreciate it. But if you're more concerned with appeasing shareholders, or making sure your diversity chart is filled out just right, then guess what? You're gonna end up like Concord with a 400 million loss. There are games that are in development right now at Sony first and second party that are more expensive than this. But as of the games that have come out so far, so think about like Spider-Man 2 and so on and so forth. We know The Last of Us Part 2 cost $220 million. Spider-Man 3 is gonna cost about $350 million. This game costs more than that. And they lost all of it because they made no money they made about a million dollars gross revenue and then they gave it all back. So this is a huge multiple hundreds of millions of dollar loss. In the end, Concord didn't appeal to anyone. It's like they made a game with no players in mind, which turned out to be exactly how many people ended up playing it. A $400 million experiment on how not to make a game. Also, remember CD Projekt Red that made Cyberpunk? Their direction doesn't look too good either. If you liked this video, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.